I'm making more accessories for the 112 scale cardboard room box I've been decorating to look like an antique kitchen. I have a collection of simple handmade crates and I'm going to use this one today as a little shelf near the fireplace. I love the shape and color of this crate but I want it to look a little older. I'm dry brushing it with some ivory paint and I start it on the back in case it looks bad. I think someone may have made this as a platform to display an item on top of or maybe as a set of stairs but I think it'll make a perfect shelf because of the little supports inside. I'm filling the lower shelves with cans of food so I went through my mini collection and chose the cans with the oldest looking labels. I want to disguise the fact that this can is made of plastic and not metal and also take away the brightness of the white label so I'm adding a mixture of matte Mod Podge and brown paint. I apply it with a brush but I tap it with my finger and roll it around in my fingers to disperse it and make it a lot more subtle. I'm filling the two bottom shelves with the cans and I'm using white glue to attach them. I'm using this yellow vintage canister on top of the shelf and I'm aging it the same way with the Mod Podge and paint. If you try this technique and you think you are a little too heavy handed, you can always remove the excess with a damp paper towel. I'm filling the canister with a mixture of utensils that are made from plastic and metal so I'm using the same Mod Podge mixture to make them look more cohesive. I'm using my favorite Dirty Down Rust to add a little bit of rust to the canister to give it that last bit of aging. I don't plan to ever reuse this canister or any of the utensils for anything else so I'm adding them in with hot glue. I'm filling the canister about a third of the way so I can position all of the utensils the way I like them. Before installing, I used my heat gun to melt any stray hot glue strands. Before the hot glue dries entirely, I'm repositioning the utensils and adding a little more at the front to keep them all in place. I glued the canister to the top of the crate shelf and now I'm going to take up some space on the floor right here. I got this wooden stool at Earth and Tree Miniatures for 75 cents in the clearance section. I made the cardboard room box with a forced perspective so the floors are angled so I'm just trimming off the back two legs so the stool can sit level. I'm not doing too much to change the stool but one thing I will do is add some shadows with black acrylic paint. Since miniatures are so small they don't tend to cast their own shadows so I just like to add them in to make them look a little more realistic and give them some weight. I'm adding black paint anywhere there would be a natural shadow including under the rungs and around the seat. I'm using the stool to hold a crate full of potatoes so I need to make the potatoes. I'm making the potatoes out of creative paper clay which is an air dry clay. This is the same clay I used in the brick wall video. I rolled two snakes the same size and after I cut one piece I'm rolling it to see if it's a good shape and size to make potatoes. Since it is I cut the rest of the pieces around the same size. To shape the potatoes I'm using the large and small end of a Dollar Tree ball stylus. I like to use my fingers to soften the ball stylus shapes so it looks more natural. I 
before the creative paper clay dries, I want to roll these around in some shaved chalk pastels to give them some color. I'm mixing a brick color with some white and brown. The color was too dark, so I added more white to get a more subtle, dusty looking color. I'm rolling the potato around gently so I don't ruin all the dents I created in it. At this point I realize I had goofed because if you add all of the dents first, the chalk pastels don't make it into the deepest parts of the potato, so I had to re-roll all of my potatoes and add the dents after coloring them. This is the second time I've made potatoes this way, and I made that same mistake the first time too. The correct order of events is roll out your snakes, cut your potato balls, roll them in the chalk pastels, and then add the dents. To make the potatoes look a little more rustic and less vibrant, I'm rolling them around in some really watered down black paint. I saw Gretchen of Little Gretchen's Workshop do this, and I like how the black paint settles into the texture you make. I tried the black paint with my hair dryer because I'm impatient, and now I'm gluing the potatoes into the crate. One thing I really like about paper clay is you don't need to bake it, and you don't need to wait for it to dry. I glued all of the potatoes into the crate and to one another while they were still wet, and left them to dry in place in the room. I'm using an antique looking stove on the stone hearth, so right now I'm making a coal or ash bucket for it. I got this Crisombon coal scuttle kit that came with some black gravel and a tiny shovel. I got this kit from Earth and Tree Miniatures, but at some point I lost the plastic handle for the bucket. I'm using a simple painting process to make this plastic bucket look like metal. Since the bucket is already black, I don't need to add a base coat, so I'm just adding a coat of my cheap acrylic silver paint. To start the aging process, I'm dabbing on some black paint with a torn sea sponge I got at the Dollar Tree. I'm trying to concentrate the corrosion around the rim and around the base where the metal meets one another. The key to make this technique look realistic is finishing with the same base color, so right now I'm going over the black with more silver. The silver top coat helps reduce a lot of the black, so it looks less like something that was sponge painted and more like really tiny specks of corrosion. You could use the same painting technique on paper to make it look like metal as well. Since I can't help myself, I'm adding a little bit of rust effects. At first I wasn't planning to because I didn't think a coal bucket would get rusty, but now I'm thinking they have to rinse this bucket and that's how the rust formed. The kit comes with enough black gravel to fill most of the bucket, but I want to save some for future projects, so I'm filling most of the space with aluminum foil. To add a little bit of height to the pile, I'm adding a layer of hot glue. I'm painting the hot glue black, so if anything shows through the little pieces of coal, you won't see any silver or hot glue. If you want to make your own bucket of coal, but you don't have any foam coal pieces, you can glue down some pebbles from outside and paint those black. I want the shovel to be sticking out of the coal, so I'm pressing it into the hot glue where it removed a little bit of paint, and now I'm going to use my knife to make a spot for the shovel. I'm using rubber finger protectors from the Dollar Tree. It's too difficult to slice the hot glue in aluminum foil, so I'm just sticking the tip of the knife in and wiggling it back and forth. 
I want the shovel to look like it's half buried in the coals, so I'm using my pliers to trim off some of the shovel so it's easier to add to the bucket. I used a little bit of white glue to glue it in place. To give the coal something to stick to, I mixed some black paint with white Elmer's glue and painted it over the entire surface. Some of the coal isn't in contact with the glue, so for added insurance, I'm adding some watered down glue to hold everything in place. The glue has a tendency to want to just sit on the surface. A good trick is spraying it with rubbing alcohol to allow the glue to just flow right into the cracks, but on small projects like this, I just force it in with a paintbrush. As a finishing touch, I'm sprinkling on a little bit of white chalk pastels before it dries. I'm not sure if an antique stove like this would use wood or coal, but either way, I think the bucket works. Once I glue it in place, I'll add a little pile of ash in front of it. In my last video, I got a great suggestion to put a corner shelf over here, so I'm building that. To quickly and easily get the right angle for the corner shelf, I'm using two scrap pieces of mat board. While the mat board was in place on the wall, I made a pencil mark to make sure the shelf doesn't stick out too far and hit the chair. I'm making sure the shelf will fit on all the areas of the wall and now I'm cutting out a solid template for more scrap mat board. I got this piece of wood from Earth and Tree Miniatures in a bundle of wood that only cost one dollar. I love how rustic it looks with the visible knots, so I'm laying my template on the pieces to make sure I capture the best knots in my shelves. I'm angling the front of the shelves to add support pieces. To avoid doing math, I traced the size of the angled cut I just made onto a scrap piece of wood and traced it onto the other side. I would normally line the shelf up with the cut end I made, but I really want this knot on one of my shelves, so I'm centering my shelf over my favorite knot. The shelf will have a top shelf, a middle shelf, and a bottom shelf, so to make them all about the same size, I'm holding them together and using my metal file. Again, to avoid measuring, I cut a strip of paper and laid the shelves in the space to get an idea of how long I need my two side support pieces to be. This is more wood I got in a $1 bundle and I'm making it look a little bit more rustic by shaving off some of the sides with my X-Acto. I'm cutting two support pieces for the shelf. Since this corner shelf will be glued to the wall, I'm using the wall itself as the back of the shelf. The shelf itself will only be made of five pieces in total, the three shelves and the two support pieces. 
The shelf will be really flimsy until it's glued into the space, so I'm using some painter's tape and my 123 blocks as a jig to help me build it. As a simple way to make sure the shelves are level, I'm using a square magnet to make sure there's a perfect square between the supporting side piece and the shelf. In my jig, the piece of painter's tape is acting like the right side of the wall in the corner. I allowed the wood glue to dry for just a few minutes before gently removing the tape. I'm using a tiny dot of super glue to reinforce every joint. I added wood glue to all the parts of the shelf that'll be in contact with the wall and glued it in place. I'm making the first accessory for the shelf using a piece of trash I found on the sidewalk. As some of you know, I have a curious habit of collecting trash. I found this little treasure on a walk and I think it's a wire insulator because it's squishy and hollow. I got this jar of buttons at an antique store and I'm going to combine a few of them with my sidewalk trash to make a milk can. These three buttons I planted here will be perfect. For step one, I'm stiffening it up with some tissues. I'm compacting the tissue to get rid of the air between them so it'll be nice and stiff to keep it from squishing. I'm using this button as the lid of the milk can because it has a little metal part at the top that looks like a handle. To add some structure to the bottom of the can, I found a button with the same diameter as the insulator. I'm gluing a larger button under the inside button to make a rim for the bottom of the jug. I carried this home in my pocket and I've handled it a whole bunch, but I'm finally cleaning it now because it's actually pretty dirty. It's probably best practice to clean your sidewalk trash shortly after bringing it home. I'm lightly sanding the whole thing to prepare it for paint and also so the paper details I add will stick. In my last video, some viewers gave me helpful advice on how to use your fingernail to curl a piece of paper. I'm using the strip of scrap cardstock around the bottom as a rim. I'm cutting a tinier strip to use to make the two handles. I made sure the seam of the bottom piece of paper is at the back, so I want to put the two handles on what will be the sides. At this small of scale, cardstock peels up in layers, so once the glue has set a little bit, I'm using my tweezers to pull off some of the bulk. To smooth out the paper and give it some strength, I'm covering it with wood glue. I'm using this container in the kitchen that says salt in German, so I'm googling some images of antique German milk jugs to paint my jug. 
I don't do much miniature painting, so it's a lot easier for me to work from a reference image than making something up. I settled on this design with scalloping at the top and some flowers in the middle. I'm doing a very simple sketch to lay out my flowers to make it easier to paint them on. I'm not a painting expert and this isn't really a tutorial, but my thought process is to lay down some colors and add some small details on top to make it look more refined. The jug I'm copying has green pieces framing the flowers, so I'm adding that now. I keep referencing the image on Google and there are green leaves surrounding the flowers, so I'm adding some of those now. The green scalloped border is dry, so I'm using some yellow ochre to outline it. I'm adding more detail to the blue flower by giving it a yellow ochre center. I'm using some more yellow ochre to make a thin line inside of all of the green details on the border. To make the flowers look like flowers and give the petals some definition, I'm making a few simple lines using some white. The Google jug has some green in the flowers, so I'm adding that now as some more contrast to make them pop. I'd like to replicate some of the tiny leaves, but I'm not sure how it'll turn out, so I'm practicing first on the back before I add it to the front. I finished off the rest of the leaves, and now I'm testing some brown chalk pastels on the back to see how it looks for aging. Here's the finished jug. I think in the future I'll hold things in place with tacky wax until I can decide on a final position because now the wooden utensils on the wall are hanging too low. I'll need to display the jug on the top shelf because neither of the other shelves fit it since I built the shelf before I made the jug. It's really coming along, but I still need to make all of the food for the surface of the stove and a few other viewer suggestions. <laughs> 